So there has been a rather large firmware update for the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus mainly on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Obviously, there has been a new DJI Fly app to implement these new features. But what I want to do is talk about the new features, show you exactly how they work to the best of my ability, because right now the wind is absolutely horrendous. And basically, if I flew this Mini 4 Pro unsheltered, I fear I would never see it again. But ultimately, by watching this video, you should get a good idea of what these new features actually do. And of course, course I will give my opinion and thoughts as to how useful I find each of these new features so let's get into it so of course as you can see there has been quite a large firmware update for the DJI Mini 4 Pro of course this also requires you to update the firmware on the controller so if you do have the DJI RC2 make sure it is connected to your home Wi-Fi or your hotspot to your phone and then what it will do is it will detect that there has been a new update available and bundled in with this RC firmware it will also give you the latest version of the DJI Fly app now if you are using the DJI RC N2 with a mobile phone or tablet if if it's iOS, you just go to your App Store and update the DJI Fly app. Or if you are using an Android device, it should pop up as an update when you first open the app. If not, you can always go to the DJI download page, okay, and download it directly from there just to get it that little bit quicker. So what are these new features then? Well, the first biggest one, in my honest opinion, is this new automatic 360 degree active tracking capability now it has to be said i do really like the idea of this new automatic feature and any of you that have had a drone try to follow you as in whether you are trying to active track a car or yourself walking any sort of sports running around basically cycling anything that requires a sort of dynamic situation this is where the usual process of using the active tracking wheel can be quite annoying the reason for that is because of course if you are driving along and you've got that fantastic chase shot from behind if you want to switch it up and get obviously a different angle you then need to stop what you're doing you then you need to of course adjust the wheel on the dji fly app to change the position whereas like i say i'm yet to use this in anger due to the weather but i'm really excited to try this where obviously in auto essentially it just leaves you to be able to do the activity that you're wanting and trust in the drone to just get some dynamic angles and just to circle around you and capture some really interesting footage so i really like the idea of that now the second major update that many of you will be really really happy with is you can now use the dji mini 4 pro with the goggles 2 the goggles integra and of course that motion controller that's not something i can demonstrate because i do not have the goggles for me i'm not really a fan of fpv flying i do appreciate those of you that are not really my thing so i've never really gone down that route but essentially if you did want to use the mini 4 pro with the goggles and motion controller you can of course now do that now the third new feature is something that certainly splits opinions because we've actually seen this new feature already implemented on the DJI Mavic 3 series. I previously did a video showing how this works on the DJI Mavic 3 Classic and well it has to be said that loads of you loved it and gave me a huge amount of thumbs down because I didn't particularly see the use. So what feature am I talking about? Well, this is Vision Assist. Essentially, what we can now do is by swiping on our DJI Fly app, we can toggle between the map view, the compass view, and of course, this new Vision Assist view, where essentially we can see the view from these obstacle avoidance sensors. Something really, really interesting and quite crazy to do. So why did it split opinion? Well, in all honesty, yes, I can see how it may have some value. Um, but of course, if you are keeping your drone on the visual line of sight and obviously being able to see it, yes, I understand some people will say it's quite useful for detecting objects behind you. Um, of course, if you're trying to fly in a tight area. But of course, if I was trying to fly in a tight area, if we do show up those vision assist cameras, as you can see, they're not stabilized. They're in black and white and overall generally 
pretty poor quality. While it's cool to have this feature, I certainly would not be relying on these sensors if I was flying in a tight space, and I would much prefer to just literally walk to where I'm flying the drone, if at all possible, and just observe how far this drone is physically away from the obstacles. Or, of course, you can just rely on the obstacle avoidance sensors, which, as I've shown on a previous video, does a really, really good job on this drone. So feature number four is the ability to now disable these downward vision sensors under here. Now, basically, this drone uses those sensors when you are attempting to land, okay? And it can detect uneven uh, ground beneath you and, of course, prevent it from actually landing thus meaning that you might have to hand catch in certain situations especially if you're trying to land over rough terrain or basically where it's not smooth now i think this is a really advantageous feature because a few years ago i was out flying and i was filming the moving of a local landmark an old fishing trawler the arctic corsair and essentially what i had this is with the dji air 2s because i could not disable these sensors and of course the tugboat was moving i found it an absolute nightmare to try and land that drone back on the deck it just simply would not have it to the point where I physically had to just fly the drone uh, match the vessel's speed and just grab the drone out of the air whereas the ability to be able to turn these off I could have now caused pretty much land anywhere I like um, and of course do exercise caution because of course it will allow you to fly lower so of course if you are trying to do that really uh, cool shot flying over grass maybe and there are sort of peaks and troughs to the terrain just be careful because the drone will no longer detect that and you could essentially crash your drone so please do be careful another nice new feature just to cap off the ones we have already had is the fact that now with the mini 4 pro when you are in 12 megapixel photo mode you can now digitally zoom in three times over and above the two that we could before so that's now a nice little feature so that wraps up this update on the dji mini 4 pro as i've already mentioned make sure all your firmwares are up to date depending on the controller app updates need to be up to date as well to enable these new features please do let me know your thoughts to what dji have now given us on the dji mini 4 pro in the comment section below i'm always interested to hear your thoughts if you found this video useful please do give it a big thumbs up of course it tells the youtube algorithm more people just like you might want to watch my content subscribe if you're awesome and until next time see you again soon